Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm going to be covering three small expansions to three different games. We're going to be starting with Golden Deals here for Century, then we're going to be doing a Canvas expansion, Finishing Touches, the second expansion to the game, and then a modular expansion to Evergreen, this is Pines and Cacti. Golden Deals here gives you new cards for Century Spice Road, but not the kinds of cards you would expect. These are actually transparent cards that are going to go in front of your Century cards in a sleeve, and they will modify the things you can do with those cards. And then you'll take them out, shuffle them up, put them in again, and you'll have random combinations of the original abilities and these new abilities. Let me show you. Golden Deals here comes with a stack of card sleeves and these transparent cards. You are going to be sleeving the cards in the game, except for your starting cards, and then you slide one of these into every card in the game, creating a new combination of two powers. The original power up here, and then some ability down here. Be aware, again, you need to do this for every card in the stack before you start playing the game. Then, you will start playing the game normally, and you have a couple of new options. So let me sleeve a couple of these in here, just so I have something to talk about. So, let's say our lineup is going to look like this. These are the first two cards, and there's some more cards after this. On my turn, you can do the same normal things you can normally do. You can acquire a card, play one, recall your whole hand, what have you. But now, you have some new options. You can... If this is the lineup, I can acquire this card, or I can trigger this ability right from here and then discard this. And in order to do that, I have to discard a card from my hand in front of me without triggering the ability. So I discard a dead hand for now, a dead card, and then I say I'm going to do this. I get a yellow cube, and I could recall two cards. That's what that means, put them back in my hand. The secondary symbol down here would be for the... Uh, combining this game with the other games in the series. Or I take the red. Or I could do this one, uh, where I take a red, or I do two upgrades, and then this card, if I trigger it, let's say I do this one, it is it goes away and will replenish the line and draw out new cards and all that. Uh, the other option is, if it's in my hand, I can do the same thing. Uh, and I have to discard a card for no effect again pick one in my hand to trigger this ability, and then it goes out of the game completely. I'll never get it back. And I'll get this one back, well, when I recall my hand. The abilities that you'll see on these cards, you've already seen a couple of them down there. Uh, there's also this symbol here, which has the, the little uh, floral arrangement around that one space. Well, that means things that other players are going to get. So if I activated this ability, I get two yellows, I get two upgrades, and everybody else gets one of those. And so it'll be some combination of all those symbols that you are looking at down there. Again, once you are done playing, then you need to pull all these out of the trans out of the sleeves, the transparencies here, set them aside, or you know, mix them in again so you can set up the game with a random arrangement between these two abilities for the next game. My main takeaway for Golden Deals here was that it was uh, much ado about nothing. I thought it was... It, I don't dislike it, and that sounds a little harsher than I mean it to, but it really does fit well, because it is fiddly. It is sort of a pain to set up every game. You need to sleeve all of these things and then take them all out each time. I feel like folks out there that play with this are going to sleeve at once and... Maybe just play a few times that way. Ah, it's random. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but then you might as well have just had the printed cards come that way. I like this idea. I like that it is a ran two random abilities that have come together. But it is so annoying to have to do this every single time. Sleeve the whole thing every time. And then unsleeve it when you're done and whatever. And then it's such a subtle... Thing, it changes. It's such a small ability. Um, I am certain that this is perhaps something that people that have played Century Spice Road 200 times 
will find incredibly clever, incredibly interesting. Oh my goodness, it gives new life to all of these cards. And these ideas that I had understood, this game that I had puzzled out, and I knew which card was better early, which was better later, the exact paths I need, I'm looking for one specific card. Those people, I think, will look at this and go, this is maybe even revolutionary to how it shakes up the game. To me, I think it messes with the clarity of the original game. Um, not to the degree that I wouldn't play with this. Not at all. I'm happy to throw this in and mess with it. It gives me a couple of small new abilities. But I enjoy the restrictive puzzle of the original. And this opens that up a little bit too much. I think the game loses some of the, the those wonderful restrictions by letting you kind of do anything with anything else now. Um, and so while I like this expansion okay, it is one that I... I'm no expert at Century Spice Road, but I suspect it might be one targeting those folks. And if so, maybe this is something that will really appeal to you. For me, this one gets a six. I think it's okay. I think it's, like I said, a little much, you know, a do about nothing. It is fiddly. It is a bit annoying to have to set up and tear down. And the change for a casual player... Uh, simply doesn't warrant all that rigmarole. Canvas Finishing Touches is actually the second expansion to Canvas, uh, and this one's going to give you new cards, of course, uh, that you get to connect together and make your painting. But it also includes the main twist here being these frames, these picture frames, that you are competing for. When you complete a painting, if you can satisfy one of those frames, you can take it and score some points. But somebody might take it away from you later on if they have more of the symbols that that frame requires. There's also a couple of new symbols in here on the cards themselves to just liven up the proceedings. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and we'll come on back. Here's most everything you are getting with the expansion finishing touches. You are going to have a few new cards that you can use to create your illustrations. And they have a couple of new symbols, which I'll come back to. You've got these Platinum Awards here. They're gonna be worth four victory points at the end of the game. New score pan and some new scoring uh, conditions. Then there's also these four frames. Every time you fill one of these frames with one of your paintings, you're gonna earn one of these. And then at the end of the game, if you're still holding on to one, you'll also get two points. These you don't lose, they're worth four. Uh, to fill them, you have to make a painting, create one that has the most of whatever each one says. So for example over here, most of the triangle symbol plus wild. And the combination of those two things. If you have the most when you paint a painting, then you'll take this from anybody who has it and you'll put your own painting in it. You can even fold these open, put a little cardboard piece that comes with it and then stand the whole thing up on the table facing out away from you. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's how those work, and they sort of hot potato around the table. Over here, like I said, we've got a couple of new symbols. And so the new symbols are going to be this shiny star, which is wild. You get to decide it is whatever you want. And then there is this new symbol right here, which copies whatever it's next to. In this case, this takes the spot of yellow, but it's going to copy whatever green happens to be. And so if we do this combination right here, then we know that I have the one sun there and, and two of these symbols. And this can copy anything. It can even copy a scoring condition, which is pretty neat. If you have a scoring condition on one of the spots and you copy that spot, you can trigger that scoring condition twice. So there you go. Those are the two new symbols. Very straightforward, very clean and easy to understand. Uh, over here, like I said, we've got a, a bunch of new scoring conditions. And on the back, they'll explain a little bit more of it. And they, they still have the, hey, don't use this one if you're using this other thing. Uh, you know, they, they avoid problematic setups by letting you know which ones you should not combine. Not recommended with emphasis or hierarchy. Okay, got it. So there you go. Uh, quite a few more of those, which is very nice. The scoring uh, uh, table here which has spaces for the original game and also the previous expansion plus the new platinum and the frames and so on. 
Um, so you can use this one to replace the previous scoring pads. And then this cardboard piece here that you can put at the top of the board, or you could do it on this side like this. If you're using both expansions, you can just keep both of those things here. So there you go. That's it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, with the main thing being the two new symbols and these being goals for the entire table that you can take away from one another. The first expansion to Canvas, which I believe was called Reflections, had a really quirky, crazy twist. The fact that the cards, these transparent cards, were actually double-sided. There was a painting of one thing on one side, and using the same outline, a painting of something else on the other side. Really wild stuff. Very clever, very sort of, wow, that's a twist, that's innovative, that's interesting. This is not that. This is more by the numbers, in my opinion. What it does add to the game, which wasn't really there before, is interaction between the players. A common goal that somebody can snatch and get some points from, and then somebody else could come along and do a better job at that thing and take it away from you. Now, you retain some of those points, in fact, most of those points, uh, but you do lose the frame and you lose those couple of points. You could even take it back again. You could take it from yourself, in fact, in this game. If you make a painting that is better than one you have in a frame, you could take it from you. And I really like that. I like that it adds a little something to force you to just look around the table even and sort of see what everybody else is doing. I do think it's better with more players. I think at a, at a lower player count, say, with two, which I enjoy Canvas at two, this is less of an important expansion. Uh, it just won't matter as much. But if you're playing with a full table, then there is something to worry about, to look around for, something to sort of achieve and, and strive for. I also really like the new symbols. I like the wild symbol quite a bit. It looks very nice on there, but it also gives you some flexibility, good amount of flexibility. And then I really like the one that copies whatever it's next to. It just makes for a fun, puzzly moment where I go, ooh, I could double this symbol and have two of that, or I could double this scoring condition, and I could do that twice. Get me two of the silver, you know, ribbons or whatever. I really enjoy it. So it's a slighter expansion, I would say, than the, uh, than the first one, uh, which is not a bad thing in my opinion. Uh, but it is, you know, by that same token then, it's not really as necessary, I would say. This is one you want to get if, A, you play oftentimes at a larger player count. You're going to find yourself playing more with, uh, where's the player count on here? With four or five players. If you find yourself playing at the higher player counts, then I recommend this one for that. And uh, if those symbols and a couple of new ideas sounded interesting. And if just the game is getting stale a little bit, you know. Uh, so for me, I like this one. This is going to get a 7 for me, which is a seal of approval. Uh, canvas finishing touches. It's a good one. I think at this point, with the for me, with the original game and finishing touches, that's enough. It's simple. It isn't flashy or extravagant. The game is comfortably what it is, a family weight game. And with this, you can play with more of the family and actually have a little bit of friendly competition. So there you go, seven for finishing touches. Evergreen Pines and Cacti is going to give you a couple of new modules. You're going to get, well, surprisingly enough, the Pines and the Cacti. And they're two new things that you can build on your Evergreen board. But you have to exclude something for every one thing you add, which is very interesting. It sort of changes the abilities you have access to from the original game. Um, so the concept here is that these things are going to subtly change how the trees grow, how the shadow interacts with what you have, and the various things you can score for, and when you score for those things. I'm going to go ahead and show you what these two different things do. We'll come on back, I'll tell you what I think of it. Here we've got pines and cacti, two separate modules that you can use uh, either separately and you can mix in whichever one you want or you can throw in both. For each one of these you choose to put in the game, however, you do need to cover up one of the previous abilities that showed up on cards. And the way you do it is, just pick the one you cover up, you put that right there on it, and uh, you need to go through the deck of cards and remove all the ones that showed the previous symbol and put in the new ones. If you want to do the cacti, 
then you find all of the cards that show the cacti down here, you'd mix them in, all right? Same thing with the pines, and like I said, you could do both, at the same time, you'll just cover up two different abilities. There's one of those for every player board, so everybody will have their own. So we'll talk about first the pines over here. They come with two different sizes. You've got the small pines here and the large pines, and you will build these through those cards, these abilities right here. They need to come from a little twig, so you'll replace one of those and put this in its place. And uh, that that's one of these, the starting level. And the way they work is, right before you do a scoring, if the pine is in shadow, it will grow. It is seeking the light. That's how the pines work. So if I have this piece uh, right here, let's say, casting shadow this way because that's where the sun is, and I have a pine right here, then it will, right before I score, I will replace this piece with this larger piece right here. And now I would do the normal scoring, all right? Now these, if they are getting any sunlight, then they are going to be worth one victory point no matter which size we're looking at here. Uh, this is worth one victory point if it is being hit by the sun, and this is worth one victory point. Uh, the difference is uh, they grow themselves, and the large ones here still count as a large tree for end-of-game scoring when you are looking at all the different biomes and figuring out how many large trees you have and how many points you get. Uh, based on these symbols right here, uh, the fertility symbols, well, these are going to now count also. It used to be only these large trees would count. Now you have two different buildings, or I guess, you know, trees, that uh, will let you gain victory points that way. So that's the main thing. They're worthless in-game, a single victory point no matter which one it is. Uh, but they grow themselves and they count as a large tree. Looking at the other option we've got out here, the cacti. And the cacti, by the way, everything I just explained is, is represented right there. Uh, the cacti are over here. They grow uh, based on their cards right here. And they are going to come right out as step one. They do not need to come from a little twig, okay? So if you're putting out one of these, bam, they come right out. You'll also notice that the cards for the cacti are the only ones that show that it must go in the landscape that this card denotes. So if I want to build a cacti with this card, it cannot just go anywhere in the world, as most cards say. This one actually has to go into this land type, which is right here. So I would have to put it, I don't know, somewhere like that, okay? So if I do that, it's ready to go. Uh, the cacti, the main thing is it's also about shadow, but the main thing is they cannot be in shadow or they'll perish. They need a lot of sun. So if it looks like this, right before scoring, this cacti is in the shadow of that tree or cactus, then I'm going to remove it and it will just go away. Otherwise, it stays out there. It's going to gain a victory point. It's going to score. Uh, it has a height of zero, so it casts no shadow. And so this would be okay if this was the arrangement and the sun is here. I gain one point for that and one point for that. Pretty good. Uh, and uh, they will not count as trees at the end of the game, but they do let you, as, as large trees, they have a, a shadow of zero, but they do let you connect a group so they do count for that, for connecting your biggest forest. So that's their usage. They, they're they easier to build. They have a single step and they come from zero right to the cactus. Uh, and uh, they connect, they count as part of your biggest group of trees when you're scoring that. But you need to keep them alive and make sure that they're not in the shadow as the sun moves around. Right before you score, if they end up in the shadow, then you wipe them out. The other interesting thing about these is... These cards have a new symbol up here, which are not canceling a previous card, but actually negating a couple of them. So it's like a negative two, which could end up making a zone, um, as far as I can tell, even a negative scoring zone. Um, it's very unlikely, but you'll you'll cancel, you know, these are like negative two versus whatever else is already up there. So you ebb and flow the value of an area which is really interesting, and so it gives you another consideration for what you let go and don't draft so that it will affect endgame scoring. So that is the Cacti expansion or module, and uh, that's both of them. 
Evergreen, in my opinion, is a wonderful game. It's one of my favorite games, in fact, from recent years. Uh, and I never thought it needed an expansion, honestly. It's very, very tight and solid and engaging as it is. But if it's going to get an expansion, I want it to be like this. Something small, something clever, and very easy to implement while forcing me to make an interesting decision about something I remove from the game. So I like that quite a bit. Uh, these are both somewhat subtle ideas. You have to worry about when will something be in shadow, where do I build it, how do I manipulate my board to benefit from these things. And they certainly can be things that you can largely ignore. Just like in the original game, there are things you can largely ignore. You don't want to go for the victory points from the little buds, then you don't have to do that. I love that myself. It's one of my favorite actions, so I do it. And in this one, oh, I've put the pines in, but you don't like the way the pines work? Then you don't have to do that, and you'll be fine, you know? Um, I like that each one of these two pieces enhances one part of the game while being detrimental in another way. You know, the pines, they, they're they large trees. That's a big deal if you build them in the right place for the end of the game. They're also worth a single victory point, and the one size one casts a shadow of one, the size two casts a shadow of two. For one point, that could really mess with your scoring. Is that worth it? Where's that trade-off? It also grows itself. Is that a good trade-off? Is that worth it? The cacti, for me, they're my favorite one of the two that come in here. I really like the way that you can just build right to it as a single step. You have to build where the card says, which is an interesting limitation. If it's ever in shadow right before you score, it's gone. I think that's interesting and it forces me to always be worried about that. But then it, it can connect your entire group. And so I find it to be a really interesting piece. It's also an interesting piece if you want to take out the shrubs and put in the pines. That's an interesting one-to-one. -one. I think that's a good way to do it. Where you can use them to connect big groups. Cast no shadow, same thing. Uh, and, and it's worth a point, in fact. But you've got to make sure you don't leave it in the shadow or it'll you know, be taken out. So it's not as good a connecting piece as the shrubs. I really like it. I like the back and forth, the push and pull of it. You know what I mean? Um, so yes, for me specifically, I like the cacti better, but I think both are really interesting. And if you've played the game a bunch and you want to spice it up a little bit, you want to throw a little curveball in it, this is a great way to do it. This is a very small expansion. It's a very simple little twist, but it's enough that I'm happy with it. It's exactly what I want. I do want this game rewritten. I don't want it taken back to the drawing board. I want a slight change that is going to be very easy to explain and implement, and it will change the composition of the deck of cards just enough to be re to relight my sort of passion for the game. I think this manages to do that. It's good. Uh, so this one's gonna get from me an 8 out of 10. I really like it. Seal of approval for this one. If you are someone like me who really enjoys Evergreen and you don't mind mixing it up a little bit, then this is one I certainly recommend. Not an expansion in any way, shape, or form that I would say is essential. Far from it. But it is going to be a neat one to throw in the box, which it easily fits in there, if you just every now and then kind of want to do a little flavor swap and try something else. You might just end up discovering you love the pines or like me, love the cacti, and you kind of want to throw it in there more often than not. So there you go, eight out of 10 for evergreen pines and cacti. And that's gonna do it everybody for this video. So three expansions, three different small additions to various games. Uh, hopefully this has been informative, uh, something you can check out and see if it's may maybe these are expansions you want to add to your own copies of these games. Thank you very much for watching and tuning in. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.